Hello and welcome to this edition of Potomac Local Live. I'm Uriah Kaiser alongside uh, Patrick Small, who's joining us today, and Teresa Coates-Ellis. Patrick Small is the director of the Economic Development Director for the City of Manassas, and Ms. Teresa Coates-Ellis is on the Manassas City Council. Thank you both for joining us today on the Potomac Local Live. Uh, what we're going to be talking about today is the future of the Mathis Avenue corridor. As many of you know, Mathis Avenue is located right outside downtown. Uh, it is home to one of my personal favorite restaurants, Tony's Pizza, uh, and it has been a long ho- time home to a Peebles uh, department store, uh, a, a J.E. Rice hardware store. Uh, it was the, lo- the longtime spot of a movie theater, and of course, uh, Nathan's Dairy Bar right there, uh, all popular attractions on Mathis. There has long been talk about redevelopment this area. So we thank you both for coming on today and wanting to talk about this redevelopment plan because a lot of people are curious about it. So um, Ms. Small, I'll start with you. What? Why do we want to redevelop this part of the city? So the Mathis Avenue corridor is more than just Mathis itself. Uh, when we refer to the corridor, we're also talking about Centerville Road. And in keeping with Council's vision for beautifying our gateway and our entry corridors and really revitalizing them, this is a corridor that is your older, typical suburban-style strip development from uh, the 60s, the 70s. And most of those buildings are beyond their useful life. So the city has spent a lot of time over the past 20 years contemplating what the future of that corridor might look like. And we've done that through the Mathis Avenue sector plan, through a ULI study, and our goal is to really beautify the corridor, uh, redevelop it, bring up the quality of businesses and and buildings that are through there, uh, hopefully keep most of the businesses that are there, but put them into newer buildings. And for the record, Tony's is moving. I'll give them a shout out. Uh, They're going up next to uh, where the old giant food store used to be on the corner of Liberia and 28th. And Peebles is rebranding as Gorman's uh, by the end of this year. So for those who've seen the going out of business or the closing sign in the Peebles department store window, they're not actually leaving. Miss Ellis, I, I, I talked about, you know, obviously some of my favorite spots and some well-known spots and m- many of them restaurant and retail, but there are office spaces over there as well. It's not just uh, restaurant and retail. Can you give us a description of, uh, for those who aren't familiar with this corridor, it's the, the types of businesses that are in that Mathis Avenue and Route 28 corridor? Uh, actually, Mathis Avenue is re- very dear to my heart because I have my small business on Mathis Avenue for 31 years. So I have seen how Mathis Avenue has slowly changed. We're way behind the curveball on that. Um, We need to make sure we are extending our old town maybe outward into maybe an uptown part of Manassas. Um, The office buildings, I'm actually up near the library. Best Western is across the street. I think that is one of the newer business centers on Mathis Avenue. Um, I can see Liberia from my window. So seeing the progress with Liberia, now it's a park, has trails, public restroom. That's just exciting. Um, There is Samantha's Corner. Uh, There is a high rise, the Apple Credit Building that has our school headquarters in the top center office. Um, what else is one? We have some car dealerships on the Route 28 uh, corridor, at least one over there. Is that correct? <laughs> a lot of car dealerships. Yeah. Parking lot, retail. Um, there's some vacancies that would be great to fill. You know, the bowling alley and also the movie theater. So some big pieces that have become available. So 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 let's talk big picture here real quick. What's the big idea for this area? We've talked, we've covered at Potomac Local, we've written a lot about your downtown, right? We know that we want, that you want to see downtown, the most urban, if, if, the urban core of the city of Manassas, if you will, and no more, no more open parking spaces, parking garages, walkable everything. Uh, is that the same goal here for Mathis as well? What's the big idea? I think more of a mixed use area, Um, you know, to have some buffer from our existing residential. uh, If there's any redevelopment, have some new housing go on. Um, Also, 
like we have at Messenger Place with some commercial on the bottom, residential on the top. Which is the new large, uh, the, the five-story building in downtown right across from City Hall uh, the, in Messenger Place. I think one of the most important things is to update the streetscape to make sure it's a beautiful gateway for our city and connect to, the, for, to Old Town Manassas. I know my staff walks and rides bikes to my office. Definitely needs improvement. It's it's walkable. We now have the you know the cross lights for people to. That's been there for a couple of years, but people will walk if we are connected, and they will use the bikes as well, and that will help in our traffic situation. So, so what types of Patrick? What types of businesses are we thinking uh, would be a good fit for this new vision of a Mathis Avenue corridor? So, as uh, Councilwoman Ellis said, um, a mixed use uh, type of environment. Uh, where you have some small businesses like like are already in there and some of the strip centers. Uh, Falkier Bank is another one that spent a good bit of money uh, reinvesting in that corridor as well. Uh, so buildings that are attractive like that uh, hire better use of some of the properties through there. Uh, and again, as, as uh, Ms. Ellis said, you know, the revitalization of that corridor starts with beaut- beautification, starts likely with public investment, streetscape work, uh, and making it a more attractive environment and then hoping that the private sector follows along and invests its money in the corridor as well. So office uses, retail uses, residential uses. Um, she mentioned the, the school board building, the Apple Federal Credit Building. Uh, a few more of those in that corridor would be wonderful to have as well. Well, with, so will this sort of the vision for this new redeveloped area, will it compete with downtown? I think it complements downtown. Uh, as we look at, at how our downtown can grow, and downtown's really the center of the community, obviously, hence downtown, uh, but sort of the vibrancy, the cultural vibrancy, the retail vibrancy, the restaurant vibrancy, the enter- uh, the entertainment that we do with our special events makes this sort of that urban core. But there's really no boundary to what the downtown of the city can really look like. It's certainly surrounded by some residential neighborhoods, historic, others established that you know are going to stay residential neighborhoods. So as we look for ways to push downtown out and grow that walkable, bikeable environment, uh, add new businesses to, to the city's tax base and as amenities for our residents, there's really a couple directions you can go. And, and we're looking at one of those in Grand Avenue, Uh, and the opportunities that are there, and those plans are progressing. You have the ability to go a little bit out 28 towards uh, the courthouse uh, as well, and then really up this direction, up 28 and uh, and Mathis. Mm -hmm. So uh, downtown will always be and have the character that it has, and much of downtown is protected because of its historic nature, and there are limited development opportunities in downtown. So as you talk about growing your downtown, as Ms. Ellis said, headed out uh, Mathis in 28 is a natural way for us to go. When you said Grand Avenue, I, I, I assume you mean the, the Grand Avenue where uh, near Georgetown South, where the city has acquired land for a new public safety building uh, and plans for streetscaping improvements along that corridor. Is that correct? That's the area you were referencing? Yes, so you have the streetscape plans, you have the new public safety building, and then also some conversation the council's been having over the past couple of years uh, about the museum uh, property and the undeveloped area behind it in between Main Street and Grand Avenue. You know, in the current downtown, there are it, it is an historic district, right? And that sort of sets it apart from other neighborhoods throughout the city. Uh, is it the intent to extend... Uh, the same rules and regulations that those who own property uh, in the historic district. Uh, for instance, if they want to make uh, f- f- a change to their facade, they have to go through the um, the architectural review board. Uh, it, those businesses on Mathis in that quarter, is it the idea to, to, to extend those uh, same rules and regulations out to that area too to make it more a unified look for the entire city? I'll, I'll feel that, Teresa. There's been there's been a lot of conversation about Annenberg Manor specifically and extending the historic district out to potentially cover Annenberg. Clearly, that's a historic property. Ultimately, whether uh, Annenberg becomes its own historic district 
uh, or whether downtown is extended. Uh, ultimately, that's a community and a city council decision. But there's been no conversation about extending uh, the historic district out up 28 in Mathis. Really, when you establish a historic district, it's defined by the character of the buildings that are in there. Uh, and the Mathis Avenue corridor and Route 28 just don't have those historic structures. And of course, Annaberg Manor is the property the city just purchased from Novant Prince William Medical Center, uh, which now um, the city is looking at turning in to a park. Miss uh, Ellis, I know that you've been uh, talking about this. This is something that you were involved with on the city council to make that decision. How do you see Annaberg Manor fitting into a new vision of Mathis? Well, it's already a park. It, it, the public can use that the grounds. They cannot go in the building. Um, I, I, I don't know. It's really up to the citizens uh, what they want to do with Annenberg. You know, uh, as a council, we had funded it to be, um, you know, secure, but we have not decided what we're doing with it yet. It's all new. Um, I think Annenberg Manor is a good connector area to our historic Manassas and our Mathis Avenue corridor. Uh, you know, as we decide what we're gonna do with that, it will draw people upward towards that area. Um, there's a lot of discussion about what to do with it, but we are gonna definitely turn to our citizens because they are the ones that really wanted to buy it. We've, in, in the past year, we've reported a little bit about building height. Right, there are some people who live or work or own property uh, in the downtown area who are concerned that some of these new developments, Messenger Place being one of them mentioned, uh, is simply too tall for the downtown area. So, uh, as as Manassas continues to grow, we know there's no stopping that. We we know with the Micron expansion, uh, we know with Amazon coming to the region, Manassas is only set to grow um, in population. Is this Mathis corridor, is it an opportunity to, to grow taller than, say, you would in the traditional downtown area? Well, I know that there's been a lot of um, discussion about the, the new construction and the height. We don't have a lot of room left in the city um, except to possibly go up. Um, if we want to continue to grow our con economy and bring in new people to our city, we have to go somewhere. And um, I don't, Mathis Avenue, I saw the sector plan. I know that it's going to be a higher, I don't know if it will be higher than Messenger Place. I think that right now is the highest people can go, the buildings can go. Am, am I right with that, Patrick? Yes, they actually needed a waiver to get that tall. Right. So that's not in historic Manassas, the Mathis Avenue. So that might be something we can look at. Is that where we should look at the height requirement? Will the city be pushing for taller buildings? I mean, when, when one thinks of a taller building, one thinks office space, right? But but let's talk about office space. Is that something that, that we have a lack of in Manassas, or do we have a, a, a glut of office space across the region with no one to fill it? Um, when we talk about uh, building heights, only I mean, do tall buildings get filled by anything really other than office space? So, um, you know, to follow up on Ms. Ellis's comments, Mathis is the perfect corridor uh, in Centerville Road for what's called mid-rise development. Uh, so when you start thinking about scales, I don't think there's ever been conversation within the city or any desire by the citizenry to see us become a high-rise downtown community. So when you look at areas around Gateway, uh, as well as Mathis and Centerville and Sudley Roads, you're really talking about buildings in scale from three stories to, you know, five or six stories. And, and as Teresa said, because we have such limited availability of real estate left, we really need to maximize um, the development parcels we have. And Mathis is fortunate in that you have the ability to create larger parcels out there that can accommodate the bigger buildings, the heights, the parking that goes with them, possibly at some point even parking deck structures. And no, office uh, is not the only user uh, that takes up uh, mid-rise buildings. Uh, the General Messenger Place is a mid-rise building, and that's a residential unit, condo buildings, 
which the city doesn't have any of, uh, really to speak of, are mid-rise buildings generally. So uh, back to that whole mix of uses or mixed use building arrangement, uh, you're talking about office, residential, and retail. So for full disclosure, where the where the Messenger Place building sits, that used to be my old office, right, before they tore it down and built the new Messenger Place when I was the Manassas Journal Messenger, one of the best jobs I ever had. Um, you know, this is... Um, this certainly does paint a new picture, right, for the city. Um, with that type of development happening, this mid-rise development, and putting a, a mixed use, as you said, of, of people, whether they're living there or working there, I think the elephant in the room is Route 28, right, the most congested road in Northern Virginia. And we know the Northern Virginia Transportation Authority has allocated about $100 million to what could be a 200 or $250 million dollar fix for this road, whether or not they choose to widen Route 28 between the city of Manassas and Fairfax County in its current position, or whether they build a bypass uh, from an area, actually a Godwin Drive extension uh, from about the uh, the Prince William Medical Center uh, through uh, what is now undeveloped land over to the intersection of Route 28 and Compton Road, just on the Fairfax County line. Traffic is going to be an issue, right? And it's it, it's going to. It, I imagine as as you're out promoting this area and as you're trying to get people to relocate here, whether they be business or or, or even families, uh, how do you address that issue of traffic on Route 28? Well, I know that our first priority will be Mathis Avenue because 28 is so complicated. <laughs> um, and the traffic, you know, we, as you know, goes through many different areas, the, the Manassas Park in the county, the, the road system. Um, we're all looking forward to possibly more dialogue about this bypass that will help our traffic situation. Do you um, support the bypass or would you rather see something done in the current, I guess, the alignment of the road? I support the bypass. Yeah. I do. A lot of people have said that this bypass um, will serve people who live in Prince William County, right? If, we, if It will serve people who currently take um, Route 28 and they may live uh, in, in Bristow or Gainesville. Well, not so much Gainesville, but the Linton Hall corridor and even some people who may be coming in from Fauquier County. Um, and it doesn't necessarily get at... Um, the the actual congestion problem. However, some others have said, well, if you live in the city, then the bypass will take people off of the streets from the city, right? And I guess make more room on the lanes of of Route 28. What are you hearing uh, from constituents um, about this bypass, about uh, about this project to 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 fix Route 28? Well, we need relief, you know, and so if the bypass is the next best thing it will i think it will help it will get people off of 28 on the upper part of 28 um it's a nightmare i had to go to arlington for a week and it took two hours just to get up there so it's probably what is the closest solution to what we have in front of us so uriah when we do our citizen satisfaction surveys uh and as people are out talking in the community um, traffic really is a concern of our residents, but when you start to talk to them about ease of getting around within the city, uh, it's not as big of a problem as it is for folks getting up to jobs in, in the district or up near the airport or wherever they're going. And you hit the nail on the head. A lot of our traffic problem uh, isn't generated by Manassas residents. In fact, the city's a net importer of labor. So it's people traveling through the city uh, to get onto those corridors. Now, the Prince William Bypass uh, initially helped uh, the parkway, and now that's starting to become congested with some of the intersections of Wellington and others, and the county's considering a massive road bond, uh, which the Chamber of Commerce, I believe, supports as well, to help fix some of those intersections, as well as to address the, um, the 28 bypass. So, you know, when you think about bypasses, it's often a, a bad word for a town or a city because they're relying on that through traffic uh, from a commercial uh, standpoint. But Manassas is a destination. 
uh, people come into the city or drive around within the city to get to our businesses. So uh, we're not a town or city that's going to die uh, if those commuters from Falkier and Prince William and Stafford County and wherever else they're commuting from uh, go around the city. And there are multiple ways to do that. And as you said, uh, building the bypass would free up uh, some capacity on the existing 28. So our Patrick, did, did we lose you there? I think we got you back there, Patrick. Can you hear me? I can. Okay, good, 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 good. Okay. Um, so, so where we lost you is you were saying that the uh, route, if a bypass were built, it would free up some existing capacity in the city on the existing Route 28 lanes. Yes, as, as Ms. Ellis said, and there, there are multiple ways for our residents to get out of the city to their jobs. But the issue isn't within the city. It's, it's our connectivity to the region. And uh, council's very active with NVTA, as you mentioned earlier, too, and uh, helping to find those regional solutions to that problem. I want to bring it back to Mathis Corridor before I let you go. Um, there is, um, Patrick mentioned that the Citizen Satisfaction Survey, and we've also done some reporting uh, on the city's efforts to reach out to the public, to hold public meetings and talk about the city's comprehensive comprehensive plan, which is a blueprint for the city's future. Um, what's the blueprint timeline, right, for for, for this uh, Mathis Avenue project? What are we talking about here? Are we looking at uh, more public meetings? Are we talking about more dialogue with the city council, looking at plans, maps? Uh, how, how, what, does that pro what does that look like, and what's the timeline? Um, you want me to take that, Teresa? So, so the sector plan, as I mentioned, um, is over a decade old, and the city did um, three sector planning projects, downtown, uh, Mathis, and Sudley, and two of those were adopted, the downtown plan and the, and the Sudley plan. Uh, we're, we're a city that has to be conscious of where we put our resources, and those resources need to be uh, placed strategically by city council, and over the past decade, uh, council has placed a lot of those resources into downtown following that sector plan. Uh, right now, uh, our focus is on the Grand Avenue uh, corridor, and then we started planning on Mathis, but really you're talking about uh, a process that could take a decade or longer uh, for us to achieve. We received a small grant from COG uh, to do some planning. The Washington was Metropolitan Council of Governments. We did. We started with that plan. Uh, then we invested some of our own resources to do some additional preliminary engineering and design. Uh, and now we have an application into the federal government uh, for final design and construction. And we could find out uh, about that by the end of the year. If we do receive that grant, that could greatly accelerate our efforts in the corridor. Uh, and you also mentioned approvals process. Uh, there still is a lot of conversation that needs to be had with the with the citizens and decisions the city council has to make uh, about moving forward. So at least a decade, uh, at least uh, from what from from what I understand, is that correct, Miss Ellis? Well, uh, like Patrick said, if the federal grant comes through, maybe we can accelerate a little bit um, to get started on that because that would be a significant plus for the Mathis Avenue corridor. But what does it look like from a um, from when you're at, Patrick? When your job is to go out to sell the city to find prospective people to 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 come here, do you think that will be a challenge with a project like this, or do you think that simply because of the Micron expansion that is expected to bring 1,100 high-paying jobs to, to the city of Manassas, or with the Amazon expansion that that people are just coming and and you need to actually make a space for them to come because we know they're coming anyway. Well, I think the city's established itself really as a community of choice for businesses and residents. And the two new apartment buildings in downtown, I think, are testament to the development communities willing to willingness to invest. The townhomes at the landing are doing fabulously. Uh, but it's not just Micron. Uh, Aurora had a major announcement. Uh, Lidos is growing in the city out at the airport. BAE is growing in the city. Lockheed's growing. The hospital's growing. So again, we're an employment center, uh, and we have to make those opportunities for ourselves and set aside that space for new businesses that want to come in, whether they be retail or office, uh, defense contractors, whoever they are. And Mathis and Centerville really present us the opportunity to accommodate those types of um, residents and businesses. 
It wouldn't be a conversation with anyone in Manassas if you did not hear the train whistle. There it is. <laughs> Patrick Small is the Economic Development Director for the City of Manassas. Teresa Coates-Ellis is a, he's on the Manassas City Council. We thank you both for joining us on this edition of Potomac Local Live. Thank you, Uriah. Thank you very much.